Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I am going to be talking to you about what it really means when a man wants to split the bill. Now, when I when I say split the bill, I'm talking about either for a meal, for a date, but also for when when living together prior to being married. This is really important for a lot of men. They will say, "What's the big deal? It's just the bill." Shouldn't a woman want to chip in sometimes? She won't value me if she's not wanting to chip in sometimes. And a woman will often believe the same thing, right? Because of feminism, because of, oh, we're all equal, and uh, <laughs> and all of that mindset depends on the woman. The woman. Um, but the thing is, it is a big deal. Okay, it is a big deal. Even if it's just a coffee, even if it's just $2 that the woman is chipping in or that she's paying for, for this, for this one little outing. It's a lot more than the money. And this is what men and women often miss, right? They look at the superficial aspect of this, just a few dollars. What's the big deal? The big deal is what that is communicating when a man doesn't want to pay for everything, a hundred percent of everything is that, he doesn't have a provider mindset. He doesn't have a provider mindset. And if he doesn't have a pro provider mindset financially when it comes to paying all the bills, then almost certainly, I'm going to say 100% to one extent or another, he's not going to have that provider mindset in all other ways either, right? He's not going to have that ambition to fully be providing for you. Um, in, a, in a committed relationship. He's not going to have that, um, that mindset of taking care of you emotionally. Like he's the one that's taking care of you. It's not you guys taking care of each other together or you taking being the one that's taking care of him. And if you are, if you are, if your feminine instinct is online in any way, that's going to become increasingly problematic for you. Even if your instinct isn't online in any way, it's not going to be fun because you're going to be living out your wounds in a relationship and he's going to be living out his wounds. It's not the way that it's supposed to be. Now, prior to me learning about polarity and polarized communication and prior to my masculine instincts being fully online, I would have said as a man, well, you know, what's the big deal? You know, why should I have to pay for everything all the time? And and I was a guy that did lead for the most part, right? I was the one that was asking a woman out on dates. I was the one that was setting up plans. I was the one that was, uh, you know, moving things forward pretty much all the time. But even still, I had that mindset. Why did I have that mindset? Well, a few reasons. I had my own level of indoctrination, even though I certainly wouldn't have called myself a feminist. I was still indoctrinated as in, in, in not really realizing what a man's role was. Um, it was just a, a lack of education in a lot of ways. And two, it was because of my own stinginess that stemmed from a core wound. I just didn't want to be putting all of this money into dates. Like, why should I have to? The woman is, uh, is on the date too, and, and she's enjoying herself and, and, uh, you know, I'm equal to her. So why should she be the one that pays? And, uh, and that's an unhealthy mindset. It's an unhealthy mindset. No, it wasn't until I fully healed that in myself that I realized, yeah, a man should be paying for everything a hundred percent of the time. Okay. And, and it's important to understand as well. We're going to go a little bit deeper into this because we're going to have some fun. You know, a man should be dating for the purpose of marriage or some kind of lifetime commitment, whatever that means. Okay. You know, whether it's a, uh, whether it's through the government or, or not, I, you know, the commitment is there. And if he's not, then he shouldn't be dating. Okay. And women should, should not be wasting their time with them, right. With those men. Men who are just there to have fun, to friends with benefits, whatever it is, 
women shouldn't be wasting their time because women are way out of their self-worth if they're doing that, right? They should be dating for marriage as well. They should be dating or for lifetime commitment, whatever that looks like. They should be looking for their person. And one of the things, unless a man has like total financial abundance, one of the things that putting that, a man having that financial responsibility of paying for all the dates, what it does is it gets him more serious about actually actually dating for a purpose, actually dating for, for a real commitment. Otherwise, dating is going to get really expensive. Um, same with paying bills, right? I've never really, I don't think I've talked much about this, but a man should be the one that's paying for 100% of the bills in uh in a relationship now obviously once a couple gets married or it, like has that lifetime commitment whatever that looks like that's going to be different right the man's going to be managing the money even if the woman is uh is earning some kind of income as well but prior to that he should be fully committed to paying for everything and a woman should be 100 percent committed to not paying for anything it's not her job it's not her responsibility and if a man is not capable of, of providing for that, then he, again, he shouldn't be dating and he shouldn't be inviting a woman to move in with him because he's not even capable of providing for her. He's not even capable of being the provider in the relationship. And he's relying on a woman to do his job, to do his job of the provision. Now, one thing I want to make clear that's really important with this, I do have a lot of compassion and empathy for men in this predicament that we're in today, right? This advice would be a lot easier for men to hear in, say, the 1960s, uh, or pretty much any time period prior to today. We are all getting poorer over time, right? Even like the 1920s, uh, prior to the Great Depression, overall, people were were more financially well off. Obviously, we didn't have cell phones and stuff like that. But as far as our living costs, we we're better off. We're getting poor. Uh, we are in a silent depression right now that is only being papered over by governments printing trillions of dollars. Uh, but but overall, it's screwing over a lot of people. Now, some people are, you know, some men are still doing okay, right? They're, they're, they've been able to start a business or multiple successful businesses or, or they're in a uh, profession that does reasonably well, like plumbing or you know, being a doctor or whatever else. But mm, a majority of men are suffering, right? The, I think I researched, it was the medium, median, this is different than the average, the median income uh, is like 40,000 something dollars. It's pretty damn low especially since so many women are looking for men that are making over $100,000. Are you, do you have what it takes to attract a man who's making over $100,000? It's like 15% of the population. Anyway, there's lots of men that are suffering. And then of course, they still want to find a partner and they still want to have a woman in their life. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty unfortunate existence. And it requires a ton of of skill sets to be able to develop that. Now, of, of course, if a man is ambitious enough and he's intelligent enough and, uh, and, and, and to, to develop the skill sets and everything to create a business, to have a, have a good product, all that kind of stuff, or go into a trade school or whatever it is to make decent money, it's fine. But a lot of men, it, it becomes increasingly difficult for men to be able to do that for everybody to be able to do that. And more and more men get left behind. And so what's the answer there? Because dating can be quite expensive, uh, especially if a man is paying for everything. Well, the answer there is, I mean, first of all, the number one answer is to do, you know, make the number one priority, uh, making more money instead of just being happy enough getting by on on whatever your minimum wage job or, or whatever it is learn skill sets learn um you know increase your earning power and that often today that often more than ever means starting a business offering value to other people but then the other part of this is men have been so indoctrinated to believe that women like that, that they need to be spending all this money on dates Okay. Now, if a man is loaded, he's making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, 
great. Blow whatever amount of money you want to on dates. But if you're not loaded as a man, and this is, you know, this is really important for women too to understand. Um, if a man's not loaded, he shouldn't be spending a whole bunch of money on dates. It's a really stupid idea. It because it's not an investment. Women are always, oh, I should do a video on this one. It's such a great topic. You know, man should be investing in me. Yeah, buying you purses and nice going to nice restaurants and stuff, that's not an investment. That is flushing money down the toilet. Now I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying that in a way that like, you know, if a man has a money, has a money, sure, spend spend on nice experiences and and uh and things and all of that. But that's not an investment. That's just consumption. Okay, that is just consumption. It's not building anything. It's money that has gone bye-bye forever. And um, and men need to be aware that women don't need this. And the women who truly think they do, they shouldn't date, right? Women who really think that they need this extravagant lifestyle, they, they shouldn't even try to date. And it's not because that kind of woman is is above him, you know, out of his league or anything. You know, women that that need all of that, they're not out of anybody's league. They think they are, and they've got a lot of entitlement. Um, but typically, those women are actually quite masculinized anyway. And um, I don't know why any woman, or any man would want to date them. Um, a lot of them are really good looking. I guess they, they've got that going for them. But uh, but if a woman's not truly feminine, she hasn't truly cultivated that energy and and moved out of that entitlement stuff, then I don't think that's uh, that's a woman out of really any man's league. So where was I? I went on a bit of a tangent there. Most women, in my experience, and I'm speaking from experience as a guy who's dated, I don't know, 500 women. I wasn't counting, wasn't keeping track, but it's, it's a lot of women. Uh, women don't need a bunch of expensive dates and they don't really care. Okay. I don't care what men say, either <laughs> men who say that women really expect all of that and need all of that as a generalization are either dating really the wrong kind of women or they're listening they or they are listening to women and what they say they want instead of doing what they want right and that's one of the reasons I've become so successful in dating is actually by not listening to, you know prior to me getting married is by not listening to what women want um and not taking that seriously now that doesn't mean that <laughs> I went way too far in that direction, okay? But what I focused on was cultivating my self-worth, learning how to be a really strong leader, have a really strong backbone, um, you know, become really assertive, really cultivate my personality, be able to have a lot of fun with women and give women an incredible experience, okay? Give women an, women an incredible experience by just being able to be so much fun no matter what I'm doing, right? Taking her literally anywhere, taking her to a park to sit on a, a park bench and have a fantastic, mind-blowing conversation that she's had has never had before. Um, and every man is capable of doing that. Every man is capable of doing that. So what I learned how to do is completely eliminate the the limiting belief that I had from my mindset that. Uh, that women need a bunch of money for them to like you or to, to have a bunch of money spent on them. Now, again, if a man does have a lot of money, I mean, it's fun to spend lots of money on, on women, right? So, so that's totally different. I'm talking about when men don't have that much money, you shouldn't be going out on expensive dates. You shouldn't be spending a hundred dollars at a restaurant or even $50 at a restaurant. Yeah, and you shouldn't be dating at all if you're not capable of taking care of a woman in some capacity, which means, you know, keeping a roof over her head, paying for the grocery bills, paying for the utilities, and, um, and you know, if she wants children, then, and you both want children, then being able to pay for children eventually. You shouldn't be dating. Like, don't waste a woman's time. But if you are able to provide that, and you're also hopefully moving upwards in the in the world with being able to progressively bring in a higher income but but currently you just don't have tons of finances don't waste your money on that because women don't need that they really don't no matter what they say they don't and most women most women who aren't like 
all entitled and that kind of stuff, they'll they'll be honest about that, that it, that it isn't that big a deal. It's really not. But you have to believe it first as a man for any men that are listening to this. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so back to splitting the bill. So if a man's not, if, if a man is not, if a man can get over that, then he realizes, okay, you know, yeah, it is my responsibility, even if I'm not able to afford too much. Um, and if he's not able to do that, by the way, I should clarify one thing for women before we go on. Almost every woman has experienced this. Any woman who's actually actively dated before. They've experienced a man who wants to split bills or wants a woman to pay for stuff some of the time. Right? Oh, I paid for, you know, the last three meals, you know, it'd be cool if you pay for it this time. It's a big problem. Now, is that man a write-off? That's really important. Is he a write-off? Should be like, okay, you know what? Not the man for me. Well, I mean, if it's a first date. I mean, that's a pretty big red flag. <laughs> it's a pretty big red flag if, if on a first date, a man is wanting a woman to split bills right from the get-go. After that, uh, it's a bit more gray area. And it becomes increasingly important for a woman to know how to communicate what's coming up for her. And use feminine communication. And, 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 and express everything vulnerably. Because... W- Typically, I'm going to speak from experience again. When I was a cheapskate, I would often lead a woman to pay for bills, never on the first date, but you know, second one, third one, fourth one, whatever. I would do that. And then um, when living with a woman, which has only happened three times, um, I would want to split bills as well. I don't think that's okay. It's not okay. But women, I think every single time that's ever happened, would do it. Every single woman, I'm talking dozens and dozens and dozens of women would follow my lead. They shouldn't have though. You know, it's great that they were following a man's lead, but if they were fully in touch with their feminine instinct, if they were fully in their feminine self-worth, they wouldn't have done it. But if a woman just says no, if a woman starts arguing or communicates typically the way that women will communicate, that's a problem too. Because now she's being disrespectful by by arguing or, or judging or creating creating boundaries or whatever. And that's not going to inspire a man into devotion. The whole problem, the reason that a man is splitting wanting to split bills in the first place is because his instincts aren't fully online and he hasn't been inspired into devotion. Okay into that full protector provider role. And so a woman doing things, communicating in a way that further pushes him away from that instinct, that further shuts him down, makes him less interested in stepping up. Now he's going to be less interested in paying for the for all the bills. And if he does it, if he ends up doing it that time or in the future, it's going to be from the wrong energy. It's going to be from this place of obligation where it's like, oh, well, she doesn't want to do it and I don't really want to do it either. But you know, you know, it's not going anywhere. So I guess I'll do it. It's what she wants. And then he's covertly submitting to the woman and it's going to end. Like that's the beginning of the end right there. When a, when a man starts covertly submitting to a woman, it's like the, the entire polarity has been hijacked. It's inverted. And if you don't use feminine communication at that point to fix it, then it's done. Okay. A man needs to be the provider, but it's not just about the role that matters. It's the energetic that matters. And if a man is not fully in his masculine instinct, that's not fully activated and he's not giving from that place of devotion, then a woman, if he's, if she's going to stick with him, needs to be able to communicate what's going on for her using feminine communication, or it's going to be over. It's going to be inverted polarity or the man resists and he he just doesn't do it either. And then, you know, that's not going to work out. So you need to learn how to communicate. You need to learn how to activate a man's instincts because just because he's not, here's the thing that a lot of women miss. A lot of men are not going to be fully in their, in their dominance, right? Like pretty much no men today. We've all been screwed up men and women alike. Okay. So don't expect it. Don't expect this perfect man. You know, the, the man that I outline on my wall, 
and in my videos, that man pretty much doesn't exist. But that man is in every single man. That dominant man is inside of every single man waiting for a feminine woman to inspire him out, okay, to be that best version of himself. And I can hear women saying, oh, like, why should I have to be doing all this work to, to bring that out? Shouldn't a man be like that? Yeah, but he's not. And in the same way, you know, the same thing I'd say to a man uh, who are looking for this, like, total feminine goddess in her, in, in her feminine self-worth who submits, you know, just fully submits and respects a man and uses feminine communication, uh, they don't exist, okay? Uh, or pretty much don't exist. A man needs to be able to bring that woman out by grounding himself, by being in his dominance, by learning how to lead, by setting boundaries, by teaching her feminine communication, all of that stuff. Okay, don't just expect it. It's not there. But in every single woman is that feminine woman in her self-worth who, who's fully letting go of control, and a man can bring that out of her as well. Isn't that cool? That's the magic of polarity. That either a man or a woman can do this work. So, yeah, you can't wait around for this perfect provider guy. Uh, he's, you know, he, 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 there's lots of men who financially provide, but the the number of men who provide in every single way who are fully coming from a place of devotion and can lead you out of all of your stuff are pretty much none. But you can do the work to inspire that out of a man, 100%. We see it all the time in our academy program. Um, and for women who want to learn how to do that, whether you're in a relationship right now or if you're dating and totally sick of the quality of men that you're currently attracting and, and all these men that want to do 50-50 and it's, it's almost better to just give up because it's just so frustrating, then, you know, make a shift. That doesn't have to start with the academy. It can start with our masterclass, our polar or relationship, your dreams masterclass, uh, which is in five days. We'll teach you this communication will teach you what it looks like we'll role play it as demonstrations to show you what it feels like and what it looks like when you're actually applying it see how you can actually shift a man and his energy and his communication just by shifting yourself you have the ability to fully empower yourself in this way whatever you're getting if you're not getting what you want in your love life then do something about it start with our master class go to polaritymasterclass.com and sign up sign up and we'll see you in five days so that you can learn how to do this too and you can over time start getting a lot less 50 50 men and when you do get them you're going to be able to inspire a lot of them into actually wanting to pay because they can feel your self-worth they can feel your femininity and they're just like oh i want to take care of this woman oh of course i want to pay for her right that's what we want that's what we help you with PolarityMasterclass.com. Go there now, book your spot, and I'll see you there.